Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. This is a, uh, a Ryukyu World Conquest Three Mountains Achievement Run update slash channel update slash where the hell have all the videos been update. So, um, I've gotten really, really, like, obsessively, uh, just, I'm just obsessed right now with the Three Mountains at the moment. And, uh, you, you'll notice that there was a whole bunch of videos missing on this, this last couple days because basically I, uh, I started a new iteration, right? So I'm, I'm in, here's the one that I've been doing on stream. Okay, so we're in 1594, and uh, things are going really well. We're in first place. We have, um, you know, we're, we're doing great. Doing great. We're on track to do the next institution. Probably going to end up having that spawn. It is the, the printing press is going to spawn in the Philippines. Uh, not the Philippines, rather, in the Manila, Malacca node. All I have to do is move my capital. I've conquered Pasai, which um, actually has higher development than Bruni, which was where I was originally intending to move my capital, but by moving it to Pasai instead, I'm still in Malacca with a reduced cost. It's going to be 235 admin instead of 330, uh, 329. But um, basically what ended up happening is that I decided against this campaign. It's like it's going really well, but I thought I could do better, so I started a new one. And it just absorbed all my time and I stopped doing anything else, um, which was bad. Normally I don't have issues with that, but I was like, well, do I want to play CK2 or do I want to just play the Three Mountains? And I, I ended up just playing the Three Mountains. So anyway, what I want to do different is in my new run, I'm on, I'm, I'm on like iteration number five or six right now. Um, trying to, instead of forming a colonial nation in Australia, which I think serves almost no purpose, I'm going to skip colonizing all of this. Instead of coring lots of land in the Philippines region, I'm intending to potentially, um... Potentially, I am going to, uh, colonize it. And then I am going to make it into a state, but I'm not gonna full core it. I'm gonna save the admin points in the early game. It's gonna cost me some money, but who cares about money? Money's not a real important thing. It saves me admin points, right? And then the thing that I've noticed is that in this region over here, Look at the Philippines. I actually am able to set up a trade company, even though I have states in this region. Because of the new states system, you can actually create trade companies in territory that you own, like that's like your capital primary area. So I have this this Philippines charter, and it is at uh, no, well that's not an accurate number because I just loaded the game up. But what I'm thinking is that I'm going to create a a trade company in the Philippines, and I'm going to get a free merchant out of that earlier in the game, which will help me out a lot more, I think, than having the provinces cored directly. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Instead of coring a lot of stuff here, I'm going to core a little bit, like a state or two, but I'm going to keep most of it uncored so that I can create a, uh, a trade company. Once you've cored the land, you can't make it into a trade company. A full core. You get the territorial core for free, which is what you need to have in order to create the trade company. So anyway, long story short, trade company in the Philippines, probably a trade company in the Moluccas, and then I'm going to move as quickly as possible directly into Malacca. And instead of moving my capital into this region, in order to form the, the to, to spawn colonialism. I'm going to make a beeline toward trying to colonize down here, move my capital into this region instead, so that I can skip having to move my capital again for global trade. The other thing I want to try to do is I, um, I don't want to spawn the Renaissance in Okinawa. What I realized was that, look at this, if I, if I were to spend points right now, well, you can't actually see it in this province. Let's find a province where maybe I could I could demonstrate it. Um, ah, shoot, I can't I can't really demonstrate it properly. Basically, the lower the development in a province, the less of a boost you get toward the next institution. And it's not. It's something where, even if the development is more, like let's say I were to develop Okinawa right now, it would cost me 130 points, but I would get like six progress toward the next institution. Where if I clicked another province twice that cost about 130 altogether, maybe a, a 65 development province, I might only end up, if it's like a really low development beginning province, I would end up with only like 1.5 institution progress per click, so I end up with 3. So would you rather have 3 or 6? And so my thought is, instead of trying to spawn the Renaissance in Okinawa, I should just basically move my capital first, probably try to take over Bruni in the beginning of the game, which is in the Malacca node, and if I could turn Bruni into my initial capital, I could spawn the um, the Renaissance in Bruni cheaper overall than if I spawned it in Okinawa. 
And at the same time, I would also be developing a province in the node that I'm going to probably end up making my home for at least 150 years or so. And then again, I'm going to get a merchant here, a merchant here. We're going to skip the colonization of Australia because it doesn't do anything. There's no gold mines down there. It doesn't, it doesn't really benefit me too much. I don't want to colonize 10 provinces down there. I want to do a better job of colonizing uh, North America. Oh, sorry, California. I did a horrible job with that. This guy has just sucked the entire campaign. He's uh, still only got six provinces. Recently, I was looking to colonize for him. But um, yeah, it's it's he's bad. Ryukin, Mexico did a really good job. Don't really care too much about these guys. I want to milk them for money, but I don't want to really spend any effort on them. But the main, th main other thing that I want to change is that instead of doing Australia, I'm going to very quickly colonize out this way, which you can do pretty early on, right? So if you colonize heavily into this region, then you can springboard yourself over to these islands. And then from there, we're going to take Cape. From Cape, we're going to go to um, St. Helena. And then I want to I want to beat Castile to this. I want my initial uh, my initial colonial nation to be this one, so that I'm the one with a huge colonial nation at this point in the game instead of Castile. And I think that that's just going to make it so much easier to weaken Western Europe and at the same time force me to be the one to spawn the next institution. Because right now I'm on track to do it. Right, I I can do it. If you look at the total value in the nodes. I have to make Malacca the most valuable node after moving my capital there, which it doesn't look like it's that close right now. But if I take all my trade ships and I send them up to uh, Hangzhou and to Nippon, I can force I can force enough money down there. I just I just I'm trying to collect money right now, so I can make it happen. But I, can, I think I can just make it a whole lot easier if I do it the other way. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on with Ryukyu. Um, I've, I've effectively started over. It's like the year 1460. Things are going very well in my other campaign. I've already conquered, uh, I was able to, somehow, the initial guy that spawns here, I forget what his name is, Kutai, actually beat Bruni, which is really unusual. So he beat Bruni, and as he was beating Bruni, I was able to fabricate a claim on Bruni while they were at war, and then get one troop landed in Pontiac, Pontiniac, Pon Pontianic. And then, before he ended the war, I marched a province, mar marched my troop here, declared the war, then Kutai conquered like all of this land so Bruni was just left with two provinces but because I had already declared the war even though the claim was for this province because I had just started colonizing Manila or Panay or something um I was able to get the the claim so the, then I'm fighting Bruni against uh, for a province that he doesn't even control anymore these two provinces were occupied while Kutai was at the war his capital was moved from Bruni to Kuching and even though I only had one troop because he had zero garrison in his new capital. I was able to siege it down in just one month. So in two months, I was able to take Kuching and then Cebu. So I basically had a free war against Bruni. And uh, so I vassalized him because unfortunately he's not out, he's outside of my coring range. And uh, the plan is in the next 15, 20 years of my new campaign, I'm going to declare a reconquest or, ca or a regular conquest war on Kutai. I'm going to take Bruni for myself, even though it's going to piss off Bruni. Who cares? I need this province. It's also going to give me the coastal center of trade, which would be great. I'm going to return everything else back to Bruni and then try to get him loyal and then integrate him. I'm also toying with the idea of going Hindu with religious ideas instead of humanist. Part of the reason why I went humanist was so that I could do the uh, the play into the Dimmy. And the Dimmy's worked out really well. I like the Dimmy. But the thing is that I'm realizing is that, um, first off, Hindu have plus one tolerance of heathens by default. So it's like having the Dimmy at like 40% influence all the time. Okay, so that there's that. The second thing is that even if I have Humanist, in the long run, I still am going to be doing a lot of diplomatic annexation, which means that a lot of the benefits from Humanist aren't really going to help me if I'm doing the Diplo vassal feeding strategy, right? Like, national unrest and years of separatism when I conquer land and then give it to a vassal, they get their own separatism. It's not based on my separatism modifier. So, I'm, any land I give to vassals is not helping me right now. Beyond that, like, max promoted cultures doesn't matter. Improved relations is, is pretty useful, but whatever. The idea cost is quite nice, but I'm just thinking maybe I could be more aggressive if instead of humanist, I went for religious ideas to get Deus Vault a little bit earlier. And, uh... And go for that. So I'm thinking about going Hindu with religious, ignoring the Dimi, converting provinces. I will have more separatism to deal with, but again, I'm still going to be primarily vassal feeding, which means I'm not dealing with it anyway. So 
anyway, long story short, that's where all the videos went. They they were lost to the nether while I was playing the Three Mountains in my new iteration. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> I, I, I did record some other stuff today. We should be back onto a normal schedule here, um, but I just wanted to let everyone know kind of what was going on with the Three Mountains and with the other video slots. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys are interested in this kind of stuff. If not, then I'm just wasting all kinds of time playing it. But I'm having a lot of fun with it, and uh, it's, it's really sucked me in. So, anyway, I'll see you again in the next episode or next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.